Hello and welcome to another episode of the Everything's Been Done podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Klein, and today we have a very special guest. His name is John Cordova, and he is the product line manager for Specialized. He works on the Creo and Roubaix, and maybe even some more things. I don't even... Titles don't matter. This guy knows a lot about bikes, specifically e-bikes. This is the hottest topic right now, so I got into some very interesting questions with him. I had a hit list, we had a small window of time, we got it done, and here's the results. Enjoy. How did I get into cycling? Uh, riding bikes has always been a passion of mine. Uh, I grew up in Colombia, South America. and Cool. There you're either a soccer player or a cyclist. Oh, no way. Cycling is actually a bigger activity than playing soccer. Whoa, I didn't oh, know there. that. It's super in the yeah. culture. Oh yeah, it's it's huge. Like back from like the the early fifties, like they've had their own uh, Vuelta Colombia, which is like the big tour of Colombia uh, with professional cyclists. So yeah, it's really big. Far out. So you had no choice. <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, I guess I had no choice. Uh, you know, it's been, yeah, it's been a big part of, of who I am. Far out. I can dig it. Uh, okay. So jumping into the Creo, I just got a hit list of questions here. So first question is why boost spacing on the, on the Creo Evo? I'm assuming that's only on the Evos. No, that's actually on, on, on both on the Evo and non Evo. Oh, uh, interesting. They're, they're both the same frame. The right, Evo, that... we just do a little extra um, uh, different components to, to make it more capable. Uh, the boost pacing is mainly driven by the chain line of the motor. So where the, the chain motor, we had to push out the, the cassette and that, that pushed out the, the spacing of the rear wheel. Um, and we also wanted to kind of keep it in line with um, in the front as well. So we did a, we call it boost road, mainly because we wanted to keep it within the, the road category of millimeter axles. And mountain bikes use a 15 millimeter front axle. And so we did a, a boost front, but with a 12 millimeter axle instead of 15. Realized that one very quickly. I did. And yeah. so yeah. Not, not many people out there are compatible. Um, and uh, we're hoping that more more brands jump on board. I, I know DT Swiss um, is set to have some wheels. Oh, cool. Okay. And that's because the bottom bracket's oversized because of the motor. Like that kind of Correct. bumps everything yes. out. Okay. That makes sense. Interesting. Interesting. All right. This question, I pulled, I pulled a bunch of the, the readers, a bunch of the viewers and stuff. Most requested question, why such a small dropper? Yeah, um, that is actually, it's, uh, it's borrowed from, we've, we've been putting dropper posts on our diverge line for a while. And you can go more. The thing is with a drop bar bike, when you have the saddle becomes lower than your handlebars, it you steer really weird. Um, so that's why we only put 50 mils. You're not doing huge drops on a drop bar bike. So we mainly do the 50 mils just to get your center of gravity a little bit lower on the descents. Interesting. Okay, cool. That's a little bit of clarification. Uh, why? Oh, can you just explain the future shock and which bikes get it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Future Shock was born uh, back in 2017 on the Roubaix. And oh, interesting. in a joint venture we had with uh, McLaren, the uh, car manufacturer and F1 team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we wanted to understand uh, a better way of adding compliance to the bike but maintaining the efficiency of a bicycle. Cool. So if you pedal a mountain bike um, with the, our normal suspension fork, 
and you take your hands off the handlebars and you push on the pedals, you'll notice the bike going up and down, mm. right? It's, the, it's suspending the bike. But with a road bike, we want that efficiency, that rigid efficiency of the fork and the frame not moving when you press on the pedals. So we learned this from McLaren that the best way would be to suspend the rider and not not the bike. Um, and that's where the future shock is born. Cool, very cool. Have 20 millimeters of travel oh, it's 20. Uh, okay. for a road and gravel use. Um, we wanna make sure that we had that balance of road efficiency, lightweight, and we get some compliance. Uh, this comes on all the Roubaix's, uh, most of the Diverge line, mm. uh, some of the Cirrus, some of the Vado SLs, and on the Creos, all come with the Future Shock. Far so out. we have a big, big array of, of bikes on our line now. What do you predict the future of e-bikes to be? And, you know, this is beyond what, what S is working on. I'm just kind of, you know, your as close to that fire as one can get. So your vision of the future is probably a little clearer than someone like me, who's not as close to it. What do you, what do you project, predict for, you know, well, for, for e-bike for specifically? Yeah, I guess the, we've been seeing this wave of, of e-bikes being uh, accepted uh, more and more by all riders. Mm. Right. Um, I think it, it started as something that, uh, non, uh, non cyclists, uh, we're getting into or, uh, riders who maybe felt they didn't have the fitness, mm. um, and seeing as, uh, more and more, uh, fit cyclists like yourself, uh, just more ingrained, uh, cycling cultures, accepting the, the e-bikes because it allows you to do so much more than what you normally do. Um, so that's kind of what, what we're seeing or what we're predicting is that it's only going to get bigger. It's, gonna, it's only going to get more accepted by riders. That doesn't really answer like um, three ounce batteries or like range that goes for four weeks. I, I mean, obviously, yes. Um, this this stuff, the components are going to get better. Um, we, you know, it's it's hard to say like, where are we going to see in the future is, um, you know, when we came out with the SL 1.1 system, uh, riders didn't, what does that mean? Uh, the SL 1.1 system is the system that is on the Creo SL. So we developed this lightweight battery and lightweight motor. Mm. That, our turbo bikes had, or, or some of them still do have a really big battery and a really big motor, but we developed this new system called the SL 1.1 mm. for lighter weight, uh, application like a road bike. Interesting. So basically you're like a politician right now. You're not really answering, but it sounds like I'm just going to answer it. Stuff's going to get lighter. Bikes are going to get, go longer. And it doesn't really seem like they can go faster because of like legally. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we are definitely uh, very fortunate to be in the States where we can have 28 mile per hour bikes. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not going to be able to go any faster because then it gets categorized as a motorcycle at that point. Um, and then people would need to get a driver's license and get insurance and get tail lights and license plates on their bicycles. But lighter, longer, I'm assuming that's all kind of just par for the course. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, if you see kind of the evolution of, of bicycles and, and other uh, vehicles, uh, that's kind of the, the norm, right? Like cars, for instance, they, you have a speed limit. Yeah. Some supercars can go really fast, but for the most part, like people are more like, how far can I drive on a tank of gas or yeah, that's the question for sure. So. And then side, like, you know, we want batteries that don't weigh anything. 
Yeah, because that's going to help with the efficiency, right? All so of it, everything, range, the, all the lighter, it. yeah, the lighter weight the package is, it, the the further you can ride. Okay, what about uh, you? Kind of touched on this, but currently, who is this bike, the Creo, designed for? Who do you guys imagine when you're like, okay, we're going to work on the blah 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 newest hottest version? You know, it's funny. A lot of us that work in product that specialize, we're kind of selfish because we, we, at the end of the day, we're kind of um, a little bit selfish because we want to build bikes for ourselves. So we're all very passionate cyclists. Um, so this bike is for people who enjoy riding bicycles. Um, just because it has a motor and a battery doesn't mean that somebody who is a passionate cyclist is not going to be into it. Um, it. The bike just allows you to go further and faster than what you normally would do. Um, so for example, like. I ride six to seven days a week. Some days I don't have uh, time to like go and bust out a cool uh, gravel loop on my Diverge. So I'll take my Creo and I can do the same loop in half the time. Um, or if I want to go explore some new trails or explore a new route, I can take the bike and have the confidence that I have range and I have power to to take me where I need to go. Actually, that br brings up a side question for me. Do you ride with a range extender? And then... Uh... It depends. Yeah, so it depends. If I'm going to do over two hours, yeah, I'll take a range extender with me. Are you... I just did a long ride on this thing for the first time. First thing I realized right away is shut the fucking battery off. You don't need to run this thing on all the time. It's a bike. It yeah. rides fine. It's slightly heavy. It's probably good for you because you're getting assistance here and there. It's interesting because then your your range is massive if you're oh, yeah. toggling that thing. And I think people don't realize that. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I mean, and you can even, um, I noticed on your video, you, you kind of played between um, sport, eco sport and, and turbo and you can actually tune each one of those settings to have a different um uh different attributes from from the out of the box right so it could be a lower assistance so you can have more range or even your turbo can have lower assistance so you can have longer range but still have plenty of power output and that range just so that i understand it and the viewers is so if you hit like uh sport mode, I think it's 30%, no, 60%. 60%, yeah. And that's 60% of what? Of 240 watts. Oh boy, hold on, let me grab my abacus. So it's not, it's not putting, if you push down 100 watts, it's not pushing 60% of that forward? Does that make sense? Yes, correct. Okay, so if you, okay, 100% is way easier. If I put in 100 watts, the bike's gonna push out 200 watts. Correct. Awesome. Okay. If, if you, yeah, correct. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. In the future, are we going to be able to replace, maybe this happens now. I don't know. Can we replace the batteries on these things? Yeah, the, the batteries are, are replaceable. I mean, but um, the app actually tells you oh, the, sick. The, the battery life. So just like your iPhone, or I assume, I'm assuming you have an iPhone, the, you go in there and you see quite kind of like the battery health. Oh. and what, how many charge cycles you've taken and whether you have a healthy battery or not. It's so, cool. Yeah. Very actually the cool. So, so the other cool thing about the bike is, um, traveling with an e-bike right now, it's a pain in the butt. So if you were going to fly, uh, um, oh. easiest way would be to ship it. And then you got to fill out all these crazy forms to ship the, the battery. Interesting. But you, what you can do is you can actually remove the main battery and then travel with two range extenders in your carry-on and you're allowed to do that on some airlines. So mm -hmm. then now lighter weight bike and you're only using your range extender. Oh, so is a, 
compared to the to the normal battery is the range extender like 50 percent like how it's yes it's it's half, half it's half the range extender mm, that's cool the range extender is half of the main battery perfect okay interesting uh okay in, in the future i know this is the same frame that you guys use with the road so it, i kind of understand that this is a tricky question mm -hmm. is there a possibility of more spacing for getting rowdy with bigger tires on these things and can you guys please focus on fenders on these things? And I know I live in a place that's very specific, but we care. You know what's funny is that I've done a couple of shop visits uh, in the Portland area and gone to like West End and yep. River City. Man, I get yep. my ear chewed out when I go into those shops yes. because um, we, uh, being in California, we don't appreciate good fenders. No, so. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who does? You just mentioned a bunch of them. Yes. And it's no skin off your backs to make them work better because you still have the choice of if you want to put them on or not. But if you have to put them on, it's a much different scenario. Sounds like you're signing up yourself to be a field tester for future fenders. Oh, I'm down. I, I don't know if it's going to help anything, but I'm down. Um, it's so necessary here. It's like, you just got to do it. Yeah, it's necessary. I don't know. I could go on on that. All right. So another political answer, but please, 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 please. We're begging you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, you know, uh, salt flats, R&D, how fast could this thing go in its current condition uh, without a governor? I don't even know if you call it a governor. Uh, well... I guess technically it could go as uh, as fast as you could push the pedals. Got it. Yes. Um, you know, you would have to just make some calculations with like how big of a chain ring can you oh, put on. Oh, okay. Cool. Right. Cause it's, it's, I, you guys nailed it with the tagline for this thing. It's you only faster is yeah. the perfect way to describe what this thing does. So I want to say that right now. It's like, oh, yeah, it's you only faster. So it's just is if you could push 400 miles an hour, it would push 800 miles. Well, whatever. It would match it. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's crazy to think about. Huh. Okay. Uh, and then uh, what about someone mentioned this? And I thought it was interesting. Regenerative brakes. Sounds like a technical headache, but I'll still get to ask you. What's the deal? Um, it, it's the system, uh, it, so it's, it's so small. So the, the first generation mm -hmm. turbo bikes actually had that in it. Um, but the, the, the braking system is so small that it doesn't collect a lot of energy to actually matter. So it, it's not worth the, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Got it. Yep. Totally. It's and, not like an F1 car where like there's so much energy collecting from those big brakes and, you know, trying to stop that car that on a bicycle, it doesn't generate enough power to, to regenerate back to the battery. Love it. And, and I assumed it was something like that. It's almost just like science. Like it just doesn't work. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's not, a, I mean, we could do it and we did it on the first generation turbos. It's just not enough power to, to go to that trouble. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. And then I guess I have one last question about the material. I actually like, okay. So I think a lot of the viewers are getting confused that like all the Creos, all the e-bikes that Specialized makes are all like $4 million. It's not true. I somehow tricked somebody into getting me the fanciest one and it, the price is remarkable which is why i've been talking about that but they also yeah. make the lowest tiers five grand that's yeah. super approachable absolutely yeah i mean and you have the same battery and motor ah, and that you have on yours um so wow. yeah so I mean, same technology on it it's just different builds and then the material yeah, it's different build. It's different build on the on the frame, right? The fork is still a carbon fiber fork, oh. um, and yeah, and different build. It has a mechanical Shimano instead of the fancy Axis strand stuff that you're riding. 
Totally. And then uh, the, it's an alloy frame. It's an alloy frame, yeah. And then does that still have Future Shock? It has Future Shock 1.5. That's right. So it doesn't have a damper. Um, and you can't adjust the, the damper with the turn of the of the dial. Okay. You actually change the springs on it to to adjust the the compression of it. Meaning, like that's like in at home in the shop. Like I want to. Yeah, you you have to take off the stem and get your get a, a cone wrench to take the cap off. Yep. So it, it's more involved. Right. Right. But, but make some adjustments to it. Interesting. Huh, cool. Okay. I don't know. I guess that's it. Boom. Under time. You've got eight extra minutes to spare. I don't know. You want to tell us something important or not even better, not important? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm stoked that you're riding the bike. Uh, it's super cool. Um, I'm curious to see how you start using it with your shoots and, and things like that. All that. You just reminded me one thing I, I know a, a next stage that i'm going to evolve with this thing what are these called oh so you don't have this installed to the bike they are need to be on the bike i i realized yes. real fast because that so toggling that, that's super cool so those are the um the 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 turbo uh, road remotes and what that does is instead of you having to look down at your top yes. two to the, the settings of the turbo you can change them where from your hands just without removing them from your handlebars. Dude, I'm so stoked that you guys make this. This is, yeah, game changer. Yeah, that's it's awesome. And the you know you can get really crafty. Um, I can send you kind of some photos of how people oh. some of the office kind of set them up. So, I would love you, that because that was a question too. Is is like there were no instructions <laughs> so wait what did you so i gotta look up how to put this on and i wanted to ask you what it's called so i know how to look it up even yes yeah yeah I, uh, and uh, i'll get that to you okay so is there i would assume there's probably like a manual of how to plug this into the thing and everything yes yeah, okay cool yeah. yeah it's pretty simple okay oh i'm so stoked that is the next evolution dude these bikes are so dope i'm just saying like I don't know. They're so much fun. It's like people hate until they ride it. And then they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's just like it's uh, you don't get a free pass because it's electric. You're still working. Um, you're just going further and you're going faster. Exactly. And I think that's lost on a lot of people because I think there are a lot of. So this is a pedal assist. It's not. Yeah, a... And there's no throttle. There's no throttle, which is, if you're a cyclist, that's what you want in an e-bike is pedal assist. Throttle yeah. is like, that's moped, motorcycle, like who cares? There's, yeah. where's the fun in that, you know? Yeah, you're, you're still getting a workout. You're still burning calories. So the other cool thing, um, the bike actually has a built-in power meter. Oh, I was wondering this. Okay, please continue. Yeah, so you can connect uh, any, uh, by computer, a Garmin, Wahoo, Brighton, whatever you use. Oh my God! Connect it to the to the bike's uh, power meter, and you can actually get your power output. Oh, I'm so stoked! I had this conversation with a friend, two ignorant idiots talking to each other. Like, it sort of seems like they would have a power meter because it's like a whole motor computer in there. Yes, it is. And so the the torque sensors of of the motor. Um, Act as a power meter. So whenever you push on the pedals, because the the bike has to think like how much effort you're putting to be able to match that, it, it is a built-in power meter. Uh, okay, I got a little more homework. Is I I feel like that's not in this. No, it is not in that. Oh, how do how do so, you? Do, I feel like is there a secret manual that we're missing? <laughs> No, I think that we need to do a better job at telling some of these features. So it shouldn't even be in that. It should be on our website. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I guess one of the features. Yeah, that is a selling point for sure. I'm gonna, uh, you know, I, I think you, you might know um, 
somebody that can work on this that does marketing for uh, <laughs> road bikes. Oh, I noticed a <laughs> hole in your website. It doesn't say. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, dude, John, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I know your time is very precious. So this was so awesome. Thank you for all the insights. Oh, thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you, John, for spending some time with us, letting us all learn a little bit more about this crazy e-bike world. And uh, whoa, the power meter, what a cool feature. I'm just saying. If you guys would like to learn a little bit more about John's inside life, you can follow him on Instagram at John Cordoba. And uh, don't forget to check out the Everything's Been Done Gear Shop, where the greatest things on the internet are happening right this moment. Yes, it's true. Yeah, uh, like new neck gaiters. Yeah, baby. What's better than that? I didn't think so. This is Dustin Klein. Feel free to subscribe. Like if you like it. Blah, 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 blah. See you next time. <laughs>